Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Baltimore Ravens and the Philadelphia Eagles. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon God and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Baltimore Ravens and the Philadelphia Eagles. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gardner. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. signals he's got to be excited about that because now he didn't just get a game plan for one week he was able to work on it for two weeks i can't wait to see if they have anything special in, in score for him today they'll run for the first time with mark ingram and he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. and we get a quick peek at the ravens starting offense one thing for us to keep in mind and remember, they're coming off of their open week last week. They got to sit up and relax a little bit before the final stretch of the season. They got the lucky draw because every team in the league wants to have that open week later in the year rather than early. They benefited. The throw here to Andrews, the tight end. That's what good for a couple of points in third down. Look now at the defensive starters for Philadelphia. And that win last week over the Giants, they were very good. And it was the pass rush that really keyed their victory. Got to the quarterback six times for sacks and plenty of other turbulence in the pocket for him as well. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. From the gun, Jackson. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. Here we go. Here we down go. at the 39. Here we go. Catch number 44 of all the year. It's a first down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and then hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. Yeah, that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. Let's go, baby. Let's go. A big play there on the catch and run. 57 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. Here with Ingram. And he'll be stopped about a yard shy of the goal line 
lead his own. Second down and goal. Jackson. And then it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Eric Silver, his second touchdown on the season. And the Ravens take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. The touchdown giving them the first quarter lead. Remember, they lost a rough game two weeks ago. Then they had to sit through the open week, but a good start here. And just think about everyone around them, everyone around the organization. When you lose headed into that open week, everyone's cringing because you don't have a chance to get on the horse and ride it again for at least two weeks. Well, they were able to take that time, use it constructively, and now they're back in form. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys are set up shot at the 23-yard line. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. As we get a peek at the number two overall pick from the 2016 draft, standing at 6'5", Carson Wentz. And what a performance in his last game. A couple of touchdown passes, that was positive. But more than two interceptions. Yeah, that's not what he's looking for. What did Vince Lombardi say, though? Winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. And that's what his eggs is having after last week's game. First carry for Corey Clement. And this will go as a game of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now. Second is short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and move some things up. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is sitting the turn early, running through all the types of tackles and put the defense back on his heels. It's Wentz. It's Wentz. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And a six-yard game gets him right around the 33. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Throwing now is Wentz. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. First offensive series forthcoming. Deshaun Jackson, wide receiver that certainly needs no introduction in this league. He's truly one of those don't blink guys because as soon as you do, he's past you and in the end zone and doesn't mind letting you know about it, too. Now Wentz going to go to Clement here out of the backfield. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I'm not sure if this play is designed for him specifically, but they got through the progression to get the ball to him. So second catch on the drive, he may not be a primary guy, but he definitely wanted the ball, don't they? Uh, absolutely. This early, the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can get him going in the passing game, it should open up his running game, too. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. The last run got six, now second and four. On second down, Clement. They give him about four on the play, but he's one short, so he's third and about the length of the football. But look now at the lineup defensively for the Ravens. Against the pass, they've had some issues, right? Number 23 in the NFL right now. And those are the kind of plays that this unit needs to make because they know that going against a team of this magnitude and the way that they're playing, they cannot afford to let them get on a roll or only chip away their timing. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. They'll try and run here with Clement. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. And a chance to maybe limit them to three if they couldn't get that stop there with a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. So from the 36 now, first and 10. To throw his wins. And complete to Zach Ertz. And they're going to be set down around the 15 yard line. The end result 21 yards. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that'll open things up for you on the outside.
side as well. That's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third to seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. But he's got it. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. On second and nine, Wentz. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert. Third and nine. Now Wentz. This will be caught just inside the 10. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they get the underneath step. You gotta go and make the tackle right away. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And you know, certainly a lot of football left to be played. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're first place in their division. Looking good, looking to be a threat come January. And let's think about what every team has in their goals. Number one goal is win. make the playoffs. Number two goal is win your division. Number three goal, the biggest goal, I think, is to be the highest seed possible that you can be heading into the playoffs so that you can have as many home games as possible to try and get you to the Super Bowl. And right now fighting for everyone possible to try to at least secure home field for the wild card and or divisional round. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. A quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing their nerves as close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third line. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. So they look like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one. Knock it away and brings up a fourth down decision. With it is Jackson. 45 yards, that's what the punt goes for. Five on the return. And the Eagles are hit, taking over first and 10. So from the 36 now, first and 10. A quick throw there out to Jeffrey. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. Now on second and 13. Wentz. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Like a freight train off the edge. Calais Campbell with a sack. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people single, think that the single. offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. The defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. Now, a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, hop back on their heels. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. Yeah. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it the whole game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. From the gun on third down, Jackson. He's got Snee. 
And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. His first catch, good for nine in the first down. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. This is Ingram on first and ten. And he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and ten. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again, second and ten. Jackson going to get this out to Brown. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen. And they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. Jackson. Is going to be incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked out inside the five yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Let's set a tone, fellas. Let's set a tone. Go, go. Wait, wait. They'll begin on the ground with Clement. And able to get him across the 10 to the 15. Tweet yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Adam Pinter, <laughs> deep gets up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever is, whatever is in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over there. there. Game five, five on the carry there, it'll be second down. Five. Now a play fade. Wins. Gonna look deep for Jeffrey. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. But well, one thing's for sure, when you get a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. Well, it appears to be red man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside. And have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. Tackle made by Tyus Bowser. On second down now, Clement. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Now Wentz on third down. And Jeffrey's got it. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. It's a game of 16 on the very first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. On first and ten, it's Clement. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Get ready, get ready, 12 yards get ready. is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Should the game up and out, pick up some of the slack. Because remember, last drive, they went three and out. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. Wentz going to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Calais Campbell able to record his fifth sack of the season. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yards back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the foot. And the pressure gets to him again. Calais Campbell in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. Eagles coming up here on a third and long, so Winston Company with some work to do after the sack. Now Reds. Deep ball for Goodwin. It's going to be And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Marquise Goodwin, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Eagles have taken the lead. Goodwin play. Of course, everybody knows 
the story of him being an Olympian. He's a long jumper, yes. right? Yes. But, but you know that he has that athleticism, that big playability. He certainly does. And not only was he an Olympian as a long jumper, married to a sprinter. How about that for speed in one family? And I love his insult celebrations now. When he does go deep and beat someone for a touchdown, now he does the long jump as his celebration. Pretty cool deal. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. the touchdown. Here's Elliott on to kick it away. This will be taken in at the wall. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive and hoping to do better than they did in their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell me they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first down. And that's what they need in order to not put the ball again. On second down, Ingram. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. But he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. Hey, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Carson Wentz and the Eagles getting set to take over. And yeah, maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish the ball game with a quarterback on the ground so much. And he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. And up to the 35 before we're able to knock him down. Philadelphia picking up the first on a game of 15. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On first down, they go with Clement again. And that play go absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case. That play got bottled up. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Personally, I think they've got to go somewhere else with the football. They've got to bracket it out there in double coverage. Makes it hard to fit it in. It would have had to have been an absolutely perfect pass. The rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off here by Jimmy Smith. And a super return as he gets us all the way down inside the 25-yard line. So it's third and long, and you know this is going to be a pass. So defensively, they're bringing an extra defensive back and just blanket the field. And this is an ill-advised throw right here as it winds up being picked off easily. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure his team sees him as confident. Continue to try to up his game. And just let him know, hey, if I'm the one, I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football. Just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. Second and ten, here's Jackson again. He's got his man, it's Andrews. 
And down inside the 15, he goes. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Reagan first. First down, Reagan. On first down, Ingram. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there. And it's second down. Loss of a yard. Brings up second and 11. Let's get that ball. Let's get that ball. Second and 11 now. Jackson. This will be caught at about the six. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. And wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Kiki QT, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Ravens have retaken the lead. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And the lead is now 14-10. That'll be taken in the end zone. Stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25 yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's been good. They utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out of open space, maybe swing the ball to him. Is that they used to call the West Coast offense the long handoff? serve as a running quarterback as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people have to run. They don't want to tackle him anymore. Or they get tired or they get out of position or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. So a line of scrimmage still with 39 on second and 10. Throwing his wins. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Third and three. The second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Three down. Again, that throw with Wentz. Now they set up the screen for Clement. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. They're going to at least line up to go for it here on fourth down. They do go for it. It's wins. And he's got his man on the out route. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. We kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. And that's the point to Jeffrey. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts. As it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. That last catch showed the marker by just a yard, leaves him with a very manageable second and one. On play action, Lance. Caught by the tight end Ertz. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. First and 10 at the 21 yard line. On first and 10, here's Rose. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. I know we're just in the second quarter and there's a ways to go in this game, but that's a second drop. That's a little bit of an alarm bell for them when they start calling plays on the offensive side of the ball. His eyes already looking upfield on that last one before he brought it in. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now wins. And that will be incomplete. 
incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds oh, now to go. That's a good job there creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first, this one from 38. And a kick by Elliott is good. And the lead is down to one now, 14-13. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything comes when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. This is fielded at the goal line. They will take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. The lane opens up that time as he'll be brought down just short of the first after a gain of about nine. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. So a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. The NFL season going to be about two-thirds complete after this weekend. So lots to get to as we check out what's going on here in week 11. We'll start over in Texas at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. And it's the Cowboys who are out in front. Two touchdown passes there for Dak Prescott. From there, we head to Hard Rock Stadium to check on the Dolphins at home in Miami. And they've got the lead in their ball game over the visiting Cleveland Browns. Devontae Parker, two touchdown catches on the afternoon. Finally, let's get right to the center of the U.S. map and check in on the Chiefs at home in Kansas City. And it's the visiting L.A. Chargers who are out in front. The Chargers trying to finish that one off and claim victory. In the game you're watching, we've seen a strong first half out of Lamar Jackson. His guys lead, though, by only a point. It's been a tight one. As for the start of the third quarter, we'll send it back to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded at the two. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Carson Wentz and the Eagles make their way out to the field. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggles. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When, when, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. We'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Ten yards there and an eagle first down. Going up to the 35 now as they come up on first and ten. A carry for Clement. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. They try to click hit her inside, but that one swallowed up because when they're open, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into go. enemy go. territory. Here we go. Philadelphia picking up the first on a game of 15. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. On the carry, here's Clement. They give him four yards there, and it'll be second and six. Yeah, yeah. We see those runs to the perimeter, we see those runs to the edge. We think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. They'll stay on the ground with Clement. And he takes this for about six down inside the 40. And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens 39. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing, Often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. And he'll hit Jeffrey complete. And he's going to have the first 
first down yardage to the 35. An eagle first down. Wentz hooking up with Jeffrey. They'll run on first down. Clement. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Yeah, let's get a second. <laughs> on play action, it's Wentz. That's caught by Jackson. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight yard line. A good pickup there, 26 yards. Before Here's Clement. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards losing yardage to the 11. The loss of the full three yards, and now it's second down. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. One more time with Clement. And he's going to battle his way down on the two-yard line. A very valuable nine-yard pickup, and now they're set up a little better here for third and goal. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Looking for the gun. Wentz. The quick slot caught. And they're going to mark him down short. Maybe by about a yard, if that. A terrific job there to keep him out of the end zone. And now it'll be fourth and goal. Interesting, a chip shot field goal here would give them the lead, but instead, they're going on fourth down. It's a sneak, it's Wentz. Trying to wedge his way in there, no signal. I don't think he got there, he did it. They try the sneak, but not enough push. He doesn't get in. And the Ravens come up big down at their own goal line. And you wonder, Charles, could that decision come back to haunt them later? And it really could, because in this situation, you kick the field goal in a tight game like this. That's a good play. He's trying to escape. He won. He's taken down. Ingram taken down to the end zone. It's a safety. And you know the man who sat in my chair the last few years? He has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. So here are the Eagles to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and ten. On the ground, it's Clement to start to drive. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. It's our field. It's our field. They fake the give. Now wins. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Give the sack there to Jake Ryan. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now, D. Berger will be caught here near midfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone parking downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game at Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. And they lead the 39 here for a first. This is third left, down. Left, 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 left. Hey, tight, tight. Shotgun now for Wentz. And he connects Wentz. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 28. I don't know whether it will be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the extra. 
explanation of how he <laughs> one of the bigger targets on the field. The tight end could be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that aside? Oh, no doubt about it. There's no that way that you're that not going to account right? for him. And he'll get about five here, so he'll take this down inside the 20 yard line. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Move with it. From the gun, it's Wins. And that will be incomplete. So now fourth down looming. Remember, these guys went for it on their last drive, but it didn't work out. Yeah, uh, even though it didn't work out, I would not be surprised at all <laughs> if they went ahead and did it again. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. All right. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, man. field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. And now here come the Ravens. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. And they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, it just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. A good run on first down. It's got him very close oh, yeah. to the line to gain, just shy of the 35. Go. Go. Ingram again. Well, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe they'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. And the throw left side right here is caught, but they're really incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's got yeah, up again Boom. at the line of scrimmage. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they look to throw. Throw the out route incomplete. That's Andrews. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 16 yards on that one and a Raven first. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected. Well, that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. Just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Let's get it. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Tackle, tackle. To throw is Jackson. This one complete to Ingram. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the last yards about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're trying to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Throw it Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. He's got a team run, complete. Call it a three-yard game, and they're bring up second down. the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It, now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. 
We'll check on his status when we get back. The Ravens on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Now a handoff here to his running back. But he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Mike, number 53, Mike 53. Right back to him on first down. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong lead. Here's second and 11. Jackson, and he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. And that'll be marked down as their first sack of the game. But they had six last week. And this offense did its homework, didn't it? Because they saw all that pressure, and they really worked hard to tamp it down and beat it back. And they did a great job in the first half. And now they've gotten their first sack here in the second half. Yeah. Look out, they're trying to increase the pressure. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. They had quite a hole to dig out of there on third and long. Not able to get the first, but a pretty good size run. A really good run. But how much confidence do you have in your next play call that you can... And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. And he's got daylight. It's a foot race. 30. Pass the 20. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Eagles defense gets up the 16. So they go on fourth down. Not only do they not get it, it turns into six points the other way. Disastrous. And many people think you should just go ahead and knock it down in that situation. Turn it over for the offense. But I had a defensive coordinator recently tell me, we see that as a passive play. We don't do that anymore. We want the ball in our hands, and we want to hit the other way. Probably also instinct a lot of times. If you see a lot of green grass ahead of you, go ahead and grab it. It's the exact right play to do. That's knowing when to break the rules and when to make a play that maybe you hadn't been taught. Elliott now to add the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. So they get another shot on offense. Falling to pick six. And then the kick is away. This is fielded at the goal line. Then he'll take this across the 25. Couple of extra yards up to the 27 yard run. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this one. I don't think all you said here. The Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Sacked by Brandon Graham. He's been doing that since he entered the league in 2010. Job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it. He was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Now it's Jackson. Open man is the tight end, Nick Boyle. And he's brought down after a very nice game. That one covers 29 yards, first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Jackson now. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Jackson, this will be caught by Brown. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. And he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 20-yard line. They hit that crossing route really well. Excellent timing, puts it right on him, and he keeps running. Yeah, turned it upfield for good yardage. On first down. Dobbins, and able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. It's a game of seven. Brings up second and three. At 
They'll keep it on the ground. Dobbins. And he'll get about three just outside the yeah. 10, stopped at the 11. The Ravens on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but oh, it's incomplete. Little parts there in coverage to knock it away. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a you're negative. Right. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give the defense a little bit of rest. Let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. They'll run on first down. Clement. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. The previous run good for nine. Here's second of the yard. Once again, it's Clement. And what he's got down short of the 40 with the 38 yard line. Well, they didn't accomplish the goal. They didn't get a stop there. Gave up another first down. They had three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you, what point you think now is the go time? I think now is the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really pitch in a stressful spot. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. A quick throw there out to Jeffrey. Now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. While he gets attended to, we'll step aside. You can't block me. You can't block me. Wins to throw on third and one. Going to look deep for Jeffrey. And that will be incomplete. Now they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings him fourth down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. Trying to pick it up with Kimmel. The first down as he gets this to the 47. A solid pick up of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. Now a play fake here on first down. Gonna look deep for Jeffrey. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and two. Wentz defers to Clement. We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Going to go to Clement here out of the backfield. And whistles and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 153 left. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They go with Clement here on the counter. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll keep it on the ground. Clement. Raven's going to use their third and final timeout. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Back to throw. Wins. This is Clement. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's an excellent read right there. Soft cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. 
And he puts one out there for a big time completion. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. They'll run with Clement. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Just like that. They'll keep it on the ground. Clement, and he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a game of two. He wasn't ready. Well, he did get a taste the previous week. He got into the end zone, trying his best to get there in this game. So far, he's been denied. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? They converted once earlier on this opening drive, but now comes a big test. Fourth and goal. And he's going to go down just outside of the five right around six-yard line. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Ravens come up big down at their own goal line. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. One last shot for Jackson. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. We're going into the final play of this game. They knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you were wondering, could it happen? Possibly? Even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for Philadelphia, it's an important win in terms of staying in the postseason race as they move to 6-4. and four. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Arizona Cardinals. Meanwhile, for Baltimore, it's a bit of